If you would like to support the Guy Jeans podcast, please write a review on iTunes or Google Reviews and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. If you have questions, suggestions, advertising inquiries, or would like to be a guest on the podcast, please email us at guyjeanspodcast at gmail.com. I'm Bart Hall with a different kind of commercial. Yes, I'm going to talk about the Bart Hall Show March 29th to April 2nd at the Long Beach Convention Center. It's called the granddaddy of them all for a reason. But in 1946, when my parents, Fred and Lois Hall, decided to produce an outdoor recreation event, there were no guidelines. So they just started celebrating what they loved, and that continues to this day. We produce these shows because we share the passion for outdoor recreation that everyone that comes to our events shares with us. People that come to our shows are good people, and the world needs more of them. Yes, we have tons of boats, the best fishing tackle, great deals at exotic hunting and fishing destinations. But the most important thing is that we will provide a full day of outdoor recreation family fun. Make new family memories March 29th to April 2nd at the Long Beach Convention Center. Details at hallshows.com. That's hallshows.com. It's a Guy Jeans podcast. Hi there, my name is Guy Jeans, and I started this podcast to talk to interesting and motivating people living and manifesting their passions and ambitions into reality. I've always said, if you're passionate and love what you do, you will be successful. Hey you guys, welcome to the podcast, Fishing Report. This is Guy Jeans, your host, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the Southern Sierra and what's going on in the Sierra Mountains and all the way down into Bakersfield. Um, for those of you that don't know, we had a huge flood event in Kernville from the Upper Kern River and the Upper Kern peaked at 46,000 CFS. And a lot of people ask me, you know, what is CFS? And I want to kind of give you a visual so you guys can imagine. But uh, a basketball is uh, a cubic foot. So um, the, C- the CFS means cubic foot per second. So if you can imagine... If it's 100 CFS, that's 100 basketballs going down the river every second. So if you go all the way up to 46,000 cubic feet per second, that's 46,000 basketballs going down the river per second. It's kind of give you an idea. Unbelievable. The river got so big that it took out a bunch of the campgrounds. Uh, river Nook Campground um, upriver from my fly shop got flooded. Um pretty bad and they're working on uh getting that all up and running here real quick um camp uh james uh got uh pretty hammered as well and uh they're fixing up things right now as well and camp kernville which is basically directly across from the shop the river from the shop and if you look across the river there's a camp over there with some trailers and stuff and you might have seen that on the news but that uh that whole campground got uh wiped out including uh, a couple trailers and you guys can see that on the news as well it was just unbelievable um, and then it went uh, all the way into Frandy campground which is uh, right by the shop as well and it uh, flooded out that whole campground um, and then it went into Kernville Park if you guys can imagine it was all the way up to the uh, basketball court and uh, the basketball court was underwater unbelievable amount of water and it just uh, was unbelievable to see. It was really sad to see in, in some cases uh, with some of the damage it did to some of the properties. Um, but uh, they're back up uh, trying to get those things squared away for the season so people can come up and camp and uh, enjoy the river. The biggest I've ever seen the river is about 25,000 cubic feet per second. And that was... Uh, in 2017 um, also in 2002 I saw it get up to uh, about 28,000 ish in that zone so it's been uh, it's been a while since we've had an amazing flood like we've had uh, the last uh, week or so 
and it was funny. We were, we were all talking, you know, like even 10,000 CFS is like big water, right? It's like unsafe. And uh, we're all, oh, so finally come down to 10,000, which is like, you know, oh my God. But uh, we like the, you know, the river to be, you know, in the 300 to 1500 CFS zone, you know, for, for fishing to kind of give you an idea. Um, it starts getting a bit uh, above that. It gets uh, a little unsafe. Um, in some certain sections, we don't uh, even go in those areas, but we have fished it uh, in 2000 CFS. You know, there's certain sections that uh, it's real flat and you can get, get out a little bit and have a good time, um, uh, especially down below town and that sort of thing. So we're looking forward to that. It's definitely been a crazy winter, you know, up and down the Sierra, um, even in Mammoth. I mean, they've got a ridiculous amount of snow up there. Um, We've got an amazing snowpack as well. I mean, we're at like 300% of normal snowpack. So that means that we're going to have water going through Kernville, uh, pretty high water in August, and which is actually a really good thing. Um, The water will be cold and it won't be hot. So the fish are going to be doing really well. Um, It'll be interesting to see. Um, what the water level comes down to uh, in the July, August time frame, um, in September even. Um, we'll just kind of have to wait and see. Um, I've seen it one year where it stayed about uh, 1,000 CFS all the way through October, which was awesome because I was floating people down the river, um, fly fishing down, and it was amazing. Um, I have a question from Angela that she uh, wrote into the uh, – Guy Jeans podcast at gmail.com. So if you guys have any questions, you know, send those questions to me through there. Angela says, what happens to the trout when the river gets that huge? That's a great question, Angela. And, you know, it was really strange um, and kind of interesting. We had a uh, trout on this road called Rio Vista, which is not too far away from the main stem of the current, but the trout had gone all the way to the edge And uh, we're swimming in the street um, this last week. So, which is kind of crazy to think, but what happens to the trout is they go to the edges and uh, they hunker down, they get behind some structure and they try to hunker down. And as the river recedes and they go back into the edges and they just kind of have to hang in that slow area or get behind a big rock or get in an eddy and they just have to hunker down and wait for it to, uh, to clear up and get, get lower. Um, Dave, um, also wrote in and he said, when will the upper river be fishable again? And, you know, I'm, I'm thinking right now it's, uh, the flows are about 3,500 and the river's starting to kind of, you know, get rid of that, uh, that murkiness and all that, and it's starting to clear up. Um, but I wouldn't come up and, uh, fish the upper Kern, you know, until it's uh, at least below 2000 just to check it out. Um, we'll, we'll be getting, uh, fish reports out to you there as well. And then the outflow going out of Lake Isabella is about, uh, 3,700, um, cubic feet per second. And so they're really blowing out the, the lower Kern right now. Um, I got another question from Jacob and it concerns the lower and it says, what's going on with the lower Kern? Why is it so brown? Any idea when that will be fishable? That's going to be a hard one to to call because they're letting a lot of water out of the the main dam right now. And uh, that's in preparation for all the 300% snowpack that we got up in the Sierra that's going to drain into the Kern, into the upper Kern. So they're kind of preparing for that. The lake right now is uh, pretty getting pretty full. So if you guys know the lake, it's starting to uh, inch its way up to the airport area. It's starting to creep up that way and um, starting to fill up. They're thinking that they're going to fill this thing up. That's what they're hoping is to, to fill the lake all the way back up. But the question, you know, why is the lower Kern, why is it so brown? Well, that's just from the runoff, you know, from some of the tributaries, stirs everything up and that those creeks and that water just dumps right into the lower current and it creates uh, turbulence and it the, picks up the mud and the dirt on the sides and it creates the water to be brown. And, um, you know, when will it be fishable again? I, it's a good question. You know, um, we'll have to wait and see what the Army Corps of Engineers decides to do um, 
and letting water out. You know, if it's over 2,000, 1,000 down, down on the lower current, it's just unsafe um, to fish, in my opinion. So I don't even go down there and, and fish that as, uh, as often. Um, I might fish the edges in some areas, but most of the time I like it to be uh, in and around the 400 mark, 400 cubic feet per second down there on the lower current. Uh, Michael wrote in and he said, uh, when will we be able to fish all the creeks? You know, that's going to probably be our go-to, you know, for a while is we're going to start fishing all the creeks. We've got tons of creeks, hundreds and hundreds of miles of creeks in the Southern Sierra that we can explore and uh, go, go and fish. Um, we've got uh, golden trout. We've got little current golden trout and we have brown trout in those creeks. So that makes for a fun time um, with our small little three weight rods um, throwing dry flies or dry droppers up there in those creeks a little tip for you when you're fishing those creeks is fish from downstream to upstream and try to hide yourself get yourself a little bit hidden behind the rocks and fish from downstream to upstream so that means casting from downstream letting your fly land upstream of you and let it float towards you that'll give you a little bit of advantage because the fish are facing upstream they're facing into the current and they can't see you. As of right now, the forest surface has closed down the forest. So that means like Lake Isabella is closed. Um, the upper river is closed right now and some of the areas uh, on the lower current as well, um, just for safety reasons. Um, Sandra wrote in and she says, uh, how is Lake Isabella? Is it full yet or getting close? Well, if you guys can imagine, you know, at 46,000 cubic feet per second coming into Lake Isabella, that it's going to, that water is going to tear down trees or float big logs down the river. It's going to take debris, rocks, all kinds of whatever's in the, in the drainage and deposit it into Lake Isabella. So right now in Lake Isabella, there's a lot of debris. There's a lot of logs. There's a lot of stuff just all around the whole lake and even in the middle, big, huge islands of of wood and stuff like that. So it's actually kind of unsafe to be out on the lake anyways until that all either blows to the shore or gets cleaned up. So um, to answer your question, is it getting full yet? It's getting close. So I think it's going to be an amazing uh, year for sure. Um, I think that uh, July, August, September, October, November are going to be epic on the upper Kern. Um, the last time the water got really big, in 2017, we had an amazing event happen where we had tons of fish, wild fish in the 20 mile stretch. The river was healthy. You know, when we have these big flood events, it deposits all kinds of sediment on the, on the edges, on the banks, and it grows new plants, which brings new bugs and more bugs. And it just creates a, a really pristine environment. And it's going to cut out some new uh, holes for people it's going to um, have rocks moved around in the in the bottom and it's going to really clean things up and make it look really nice so i'm looking forward to seeing the crystal clear upper Kern river again it's a it's definitely a magical place other options to fish well right now uh, in a, a little local pond uh in bakersfield i went and fished and uh you know bass are moving on to the the pre-spawn their beds and um, caught a couple bass, caught a couple crappie. Um, so those are options right now is to go and fish some of the other lakes. You got Buena Vista Lake, you got Hart Park Lake, you got Ming Lake. Um, you got all these lakes that uh, you can go and fish and, and have a good time just in this little local area. So that's, uh, that's something you might check out. We should be able to fish the creeks as soon as the roads open, but that's a hard thing to say um, when, and predict when that's going to happen. Um, we have so much snow up in the high country. Um, so depending on when other, whether we can get into those creeks depends on whether those roads are open. So a best, the best thing to do is just to uh, keep an eye out on our fishing reports and uh, also our, our web page and on Facebook and Instagram on what's going on. Um, and if we're able to get up into those, we'll keep you informed through those avenues for sure. Um, 
Remember to uh, follow us on Instagram, Kern River Fly Shop on Instagram, as well as the Guy Jeans Podcast on Instagram and in Facebook. Make sure to check all that out. And again, if you guys have any questions, email me at guyjeanspodcast.com. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you next time. It's a Guy Jeans Podcast.